first slide shows two names, Urbanomics, which I'm, uh, that's my firm. I'm president of that firm. We're a Florida-based firm. Bob Leake, uh, we, I, I had hoped that he would be here for the presentation, but he had a commitment that he couldn't break, and, and, uh, but, uh, so there would have been two of us here making a presentation. He is principal of the Leake Goforth Company, which is a Raleigh-based firm, and we work together considerably uh, on these types of projects. Leak Goforth is a, is a firm of uh, industrial site consultants. They, they represent uh, companies who are looking for sites. Strategic plan objectives. First of all, what is a strategic plan? A strategic plan, in this case for economic development, is, is, a, is, is a both a vision and a, um, a description of strategies and actions necessary to carry out that vision. We were asked in the RFP process to um, look at three things. We call these objectives. The first is where are we? In other words, what is the status of our economy? What trends uh, confront us? Uh, what, uh, what, what's the economic situation nationally, regionally that affect our economy in Washington County? How do we stack up as a, as an, as a competitive area for attracting and sustaining business? The second objective is to, to determine what directions should we go? What goals and strategies uh, are necessary to foster economic growth in the community on a sustained basis? And that includes the types of businesses and industries that uh, can best achieve that sustained level of growth. And then how do we get there? That's a $64 question. What do we need to do to make Hagerstown and Washington County a more attractive place uh, to attract business and sustain it, and to market the community outside the borders of the, of the, of the county and the city so that people understand who we are, what we offer, and can uh, serve as, as, a, as guides to, uh, to business. But here is a, is a roster of, of uh, activities that we went through in developing the strategic plan. The first was stakeholder interviews, interviews with public officials and department heads and business leaders and others uh, so that we could pick their brains, ask them what they think, what's, 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 what are the strengths of the area, what are the weaknesses, uh, what are the uh, opportunities that the area has, what are their ideas, what are the problems that we, that we face in terms of trying to promote economic development. The second is an economic and community assessment, real detailed assessment looking at a variety of, 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 uh, of factors and variables, employment, occupations, wages, real estate market, and so on. Where, in other words, where are you? That's, the, that's what the economic and community assessment tries to answer. And part of that community and economic assessment is what we call a competitive economic scorecard. That's something that we developed and what it does is allow you to see how you stack up, how you compare to a variety of other communities uh, around not only the region, but around the uh, eastern United States and elsewhere. The guiding principles are really the objectives or the goals that uh, um, lay the groundwork for economic development in Hagerstown, Washington County, and we'll elaborate on those. Then we identify the types of business and industry, the economic clusters and targets that best match those goals uh, that, and provide you the best opportunity for economic growth. We were also asked to identify primary opportunity areas. Uh, those are areas within the, within the county, within the city and county that represent the best opportunities to attract economic growth. Uh, and, and we'll describe what they are. The next uh, element is uh, economic growth strategies and actions. These are all those things that we think this area needs to do uh, to uh, improve its position, its competitive position to attract and sustain business and industry. And then a five-year action plan. This is kind of a work program, if you will, on a year-by-year -year basis, in this case, 2013 through 2017, what action should be taken by year, by whom, in the community. 
The stakeholder interviews, we interviewed every uh, city and county elected official individually. The city and county administrators, and as well as uh, representatives of various key departments like public works, planning, uh, and others. Um, the Economic Development Commission, the EDC, uh, and staff, uh, allied organizations, we call them allies because they also uh, are, are in the business of promoting economic development, a Chamber of Commerce, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Greater Hagerstown Committee. We interviewed workforce and small business development representatives, uh, public as well as private. Uh, we, represented, we interviewed a number of, uh, of your large industries like Staples and, and Volvo and, and others uh, to get some sense as to what their issues are and what they think the opportunities are. Representatives of the agricultural sector, um, not only Leslie Hart here, but uh, actual you know, people that, uh, that are in the farming business. And then some of the town managers. The economic and community assessment involves analyses of these factors. And what are the existing population, labor force, occupational employment and wage trends and characteristics in the economy? We'll talk about some of those realities. What, exist, what are your existing industries that, that impact the community? Um, in this case, uh, manufacturing, obviously, with a, with a firm like Volvo, and there are many other, Synetic Landis, uh, as, uh, those two are representative of a fairly large manufacturing sector. The distribution industry, which is uh, mainly because of uh, I-81, the, uh, the, the, your presence on I-81. Business, financial, and information services, you've got two, I'll call them gorillas in the market with First Data and, uh, and City. Those are major institutions or, or employers, and there are others as well. Health and social services is a big uh, sector, um, and it's very diverse. You've got, of course, the hospital complex, Emeritus, and the Robin Wood Professional Center. You've got other medical facilities. You've got the... Uh, the State Department of Social Services, you've got the uh, state correctional facilities, which if taken together, these represent a major sector of your economy. And of course, agriculture and tourism. Agriculture represents 40% of the land area of the county, and therefore is a major factor in it. It's the quintessential small business. And tourism is a major, major factor. Again, shows, uh, you know, the various aspects of the community and economic uh, assessment and then last but not least in this and it's a subject of a separate document what what targets what industry targets and what development areas uh, make sense to us in terms of uh, priorities competitive economic strengths these are several factors are really not a result of our assessment they're they're a part in part the result of our assessment and part the result of our interviews with stakeholders. And um, a lot of them came through loud and clear. Clearly, the and, and these are not presented necessarily in order of importance, but uh, they're all important. One is regional location and transportation. I mean, that's clearly an asset or a strength of the Hagerstown, Washington County area. You're at the junction of two major interstate highways. You're within 70 miles or an hour and a half of of two metropolitan markets with a total of eight million people. Those are huge markets uh, to be able to draw upon, ultimately. Um, Hagerstown Regional Airport was brought to our attention as a major asset, the second largest uh, public use runway uh, in Maryland, second longest, um, and is, uh, is a major factor in your economic future. Existing industries to us um, are, are, are a major uh, factor, a major asset, with uh, three leading employers like uh, Volvo, uh, City, and, and First Data, uh, which total about 6,000 plus employees. That's a significant uh, presence uh, of some major players in the market, and of course you have many and many others that are too numerous to mention. Most of the stakeholders we interviewed felt that health, education, health care, and social services uh, were uh, an asset to this area. 
uh, some thought that uh, maybe perhaps the social services uh, is not as, sig as significant an asset as uh, uh, as you know one would might one might think because it contributes to other issues in Hagerstown, the city of Hagerstown particularly. The outdoors, national and state parks. You have two national uh, treasures here: the CNO Canal and Antietam Battlefield several state parks, a number of historic sites, the, the crossroads of the Civil War, and a wonderful outdoors environment. Arts, culture, and entertainment with your museums, your uh, minor presence of minor league baseball in the community and other assets, uh, that's a major factor. Volunteerism and, and community involvement, that's something that impressed me. Um, there are probably more volunteer-oriented organizations in this area than I've counted in, in, in many areas in which we've worked, which is a, a great, great strength. Uh, it's it's uh, very gratifying to see so the community involved on a volunteer basis uh, in, in so many aspects of community life. That has a downside, too, which I'll, I'll get into as part of the weaknesses. Pro-business climate. Um, both the city and the county governments are pro-business. Uh, you, you welcome business to the community, which, I, which is a major, major factor. Companies that are looking for locations want a welcoming attitude in their communities, and you have that, and that's good to see. Then a favor, you enjoy a favorable cost environment in terms of cost of living, cost of housing, uh, and other factors. It's, uh, it's certainly a lot less expensive to live here than it is in Frederick County, for example. Less so in terms of uh, your comparisons to Franklin County, Pennsylvania, Berkeley County, West Virginia, but you still have some favorable cost uh, advantages. Competitive weaknesses. We were told by a number of people that uh, there's an inadequate supply of skilled labor in the area. Um, we didn't find that necessarily, but I think that is, a, that it, that is a, an issue to be addressed. It seems that the companies that are seeking labor are able to find it. Uh, they, it may be difficult at times, but the labor seems to be there. Uh, but I think that's an issue that is going to require continued attention to make sure that that skilled labor is available to businesses as, as uh, the area grows, the area economy grows. Downtown poverty, low-income housing, and vacancies. Um, downtown Hagerstown, which is, a, you know, architecturally and the, the physical environment is uh, beautiful. Um, I, when I was with the Maryland Department of State Planning years ago, we used to travel this area extensively, and I've always remarked uh, about the the architectural quality and the urban design uh, quality of, of Hagerstown. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful community. But it has some problems. Um, the concentration of uh, low-income people and low-income housing uh, causes some problems um, that, uh, that need to be addressed. There's a perceived, uh, perceived economic separation from Baltimore and Washington. South Mountain, as, as, it, as it turns out, is quite a physical divide between the greater Baltimore-Washington area and Western Maryland. Although Hagerstown, Washington County, is becoming less Western Maryland in its, in its economy and, and, uh, and, and uh, social position, it's becoming more urban, if you will, more of an urban uh, area. Um, but there's still that perceived separation. Right now, for example, uh, most of your, you get uh, 16,000 inbound commuters from Franklin County and, and Berkeley County. Uh, that's commuting into uh, Hager, Hagerstown, Washington County. But you send about 18,000 commuters across South Mountain to work in the greater Baltimore and Washington areas and very few are coming the other way. Uh, so there, so that, that separation exists. You're more, attuned, you're more aligned to I-81 activity than you are to I-70 activity. And we have some strategies to try to rectify that. Competition from uh, adjacent and nearby states. 
Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Virginia all have more favorable tax policies. Their economic development, state economic development agencies appear to be more generous when it comes to incentives provided to industry. So you're at a, somewhat of a competitive disadvantage to your neighbors up and down I-81. Water service and annexation issues. Another, another area of difficulty. Uh, the city seeks to grow, uh, to be sure. They have a tax base that needs to increase. Uh, and they can increase the tax base through annexation. Uh, but by the same token, the county in attracting business and industry to unincorporated sections, they need the water service from the county, but sometimes it could be a turnoff to those industries seeking to locate if they have to enter into pre-annexation agreements. There's a solution. I think both sides, both sides need to be served in that process, but there, there is solu a solution. But right now, that's an area of, of, of concern. Overregulation of land development. I mentioned that in the competitive strengths, that um, pro-business attitude among local governments is a positive. This is the other side. If that's a positive, then why is it so difficult to go through the permitting process? We were told by any number of people that going through the permitting process uh, is, is very difficult in this area, perhaps the county more than the city, in terms of the interpretation of regulations, the application of regulations, the time period required to get permits, the cost of, of, uh, of complying with permit requirements, is, is uh, very difficult, and that's a turnoff to uh, new business development. So there's a disconnect between the pro-business climate that exists at the political level and the, and the uh, permitting uh, requirements that are very laborious at the, uh, at the working level. Then the last one, which is kind of interesting, is difficulty reaching consensus and acting on important issues. I said in the strengths that volunteerism and community involvement is a major strength, and it is, to be sure. It's great to see that many people and institutions involved in community activities. But if they're not on the same page, uh, and if there's uh, great disputes among entities, different priorities, the challenges are, as you see, as you, as you can see in, in, say, downtown Hagerstown, uh, as was the subject of a, of a very thoughtful article in the in an in a issue of Hagerstown Magazine last year, it's difficult to get things done because not everybody's on the same page and, and rowing in the same direction. So that's something to be worked on. Competitive economic scorecard, which I, I said was, you know, comparing Hagerstown, Washington County with your neighbors and others in, out there that have similar characteristics. We identified 12 other city-county areas uh, in, the, in the region and outside the region to compare you to on a basis of several different economic variables. And you can see your neighbors, Frederick uh, County, Maryland, and uh, Frederick City is, of course, uh, mentioned as well. Berkeley County, West Virginia, the Martinsburg area, part of the metropolitan statistical area of, of Hagerstown. Franklin County, Pennsylvania, Cumberland, which is further up I-81 towards Harrisburg, and Frederick County, Virginia, the Winchester area. We also, we also included Spotsylvania County, Virginia, which is the Fredericksburg uh, area. And it so happens that that's about the same distance south of Washington as you are northwest. So there's a similarity in there on I-95. Asheville, North Carolina, um, Hickory, uh, area, uh, North Carolina, Florence, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Johnson City, Tennessee on I-81, and Warren County, uh, Kentucky. What are the similarities? Well, interstate highway access. Many of these areas have two intersecting interstate highways. Um, distance from metropolitan areas. Most of them are maybe between 50 and 100 miles from major metropolitan centers, whether they be Charlotte or, or uh, 
the Piedmont Triad or Atlanta or uh, what have you, or Nashville. Um, population, all are sort of in the, like Hagerstown, uh, Washington County is 140,000 people. You know, the, your, your, the, these comparisons are somewhere between 125 and maybe 225,000 population. So we looked at these communities from a variety of perspectives, a variety of economic variables, and these are what, this is what we found. Some competitive strengths of your area, obviously superior regional access and transportation, with I-81 being the key corridor right now in terms of north-south growth. I will mention that uh, the Maryland Freight Plan, which was produced by the Maryland DOT a couple of years ago, showed that uh, I-81 through Washington County was the second most heavily traveled truck, most heavily truck traveled route in Maryland, uh, behind a short, uh, and, a, and a just a short distance, a slight distance behind uh, I-95 in Cecil County. I forget what the traffic volume was per day, but I mean, that's significant. Um, and that may be growing. Um, Bob Goforth and Bob Leak, uh, my partners on this project, are doing some work in North Carolina, looking at the economic impact of tolling I-95. Uh, and, and the state uh, is anxious because they, don't, they are out of money to maintain these, uh, these interstate highways and primary highways. So they're very uh, anxious to, be, to begin to put tolls on I-95. Virginia may do the same thing. What does that do? That begins to move traffic to I-81. Uh, I-81, some distributors who, who are located in this area tell me, is the new I-95. If you, if you, can, if you link up I-81, I-75, and I-78 to the north, um, you begin to, to, to form another corridor that rivals I-95 in terms of, uh, of interstate truck traffic, and that's what's indeed what's happening to I-81. Um, strong employment base. Now, this, this may seem odd, so I guess uh, someone was telling me uh, the, the article in the newspaper this morning said the employment rate had increased by a fraction in Washington County. Well, our analysis is that um, you have a very strong employment and wage base, in and we express that in terms of number of jobs available in the county per 1,000 residents. Yours is well over 400 jobs per 1,000 residents. And it's been our experience that when you're, at that, when you're at that level, you really have a very sound economy. You have a good, strong employment base. Most of the communities that we compared you to in this competitive scorecard are lower than that, have less than that. Certainly Frederick does, uh, Franklin County does, Berkeley County does. Um, some have higher, uh, but, uh, but you have a strong employment and wage base. What's happening? Why is the employment rate so high? Um, or as high as it is? Well, the, uh, the situation is, I think I might have mentioned this in a previous slide, you have 16,000 inbound commuters according to some recent census statistics from Franklin County and uh, Berkeley County. There are 16,000 non-residents taking jobs in your county. Uh, by the same token, you have 19,000 people commuting from Hagerstown and Washington County across the mountain to jobs in the greater Baltimore, Washington area. Now it may be that those, that's where most of the unemployment is occurring, is in those jobs by com people commuting to other locations. Certainly there see, appear to be enough jobs within the county, a number of which are being taken by non-residents. So, so the, while you would appear to have a statistically high unemployment base, you have a strong employment base but you have, there's a regional dynamic going on. Uh, computers leaving, uh, commuters coming in that uh, sort of distort the whole picture. You have a high quality of life compared to these other communities. Favorable cost of living, 
housing costs, crime rate, health service index, you stack up very well. Um, prominent industries, um, all areas uh, can claim some significant presence of industry in their, in their communities. But you, you, you uh, are quite strong, especially with some of your major employers like Volvo and, and First Data and City and others. You have a very strong farming sector. I think the, the uh, gross receipts per farm um, in, in uh, Washington County exceed every other, all the other 12 counties except for Franklin County, Pennsylvania. So you have a very strong farming sector, and that's important to preserve. Um, and you have a strong blue-collar labor force. Slower population, labor force, housing, and job growth. Uh, your growth rate, current growth rate, or growth rate over the past decade, is, is frankly a, a little bit lower than most other areas that we compared you to. The second one is particularly troubling. Lower educational attainment. Um, I think uh, the, this area had the highest or the lowest uh, or second lowest uh, level of educational attainment. That's, we, we express that in terms of the percent of the population 25 and older that have a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, if you're attempting to attract um, professionals um, to the community and, and industries that, that employ professionals and technical workers, high, high wage industries particularly, that's a troubling statistics and, and needs to be, um, needs, something needs to be done about that. We have some suggestions. But that low level of educational attainment, uh, site selectors, when they look at areas and they try to shortlist uh, areas for locating industry, will go through these statistics and, you know, if they find things that they don't like, you're out. And you won't even know you're out. So, so these are things that need to be addressed. You have a proportionally lower business and financial and professional service, professional and technical occupational profile by a large margin than most areas. Your, average, your wages are about average for most sectors, except manufacturing where man, your manufacturing wage is higher than those communities that we compared you to. And you have a, you're troubled or burdened by a high state tax climate. I think uh, Maryland is by the tax foundation ranked uh, 42 out of 50 states in terms of uh, high cost of taxes. You have some favorable costs or tax situations, corporate and sales tax, I guess, are more favorable in other areas, but property tax and, and other taxes are, are higher in Maryland. But overall, uh, 42 of 50 is not, uh, is, not, is not good. The next two slides show or, or list uh, six what we call guiding principles. The request for proposal that we answered um, requested that we um, identify guiding principles or goals. What are, the, what are the, the economic goals that the community should strive for? And these to us uh, were the most, uh, most important. The first is a more diversified and recession-proof economic base. What do we mean by that? Well, for example, you have three employers, Volvo, City, and First Data, uh, that employ collectively uh, more than 6,000 workers. 6,200, something like that. It's almost, and, and that's wonderful. It's great to have those, those large employers in the community. Um, and uh, it's important to keep them, do whatever needs to be done to keep them in the community. But by the same token, they're part of uh, global uh, or certainly national firms and subject to the vagaries and the, of, uh, of, of corporate decision making over which you have no control. It's almost preferable, rather than to have three employee, three employers with 6,000 workers, to have 30 employers with 200 each. And that's, that's what we mean by a more diversified and recession-proof economic base. It takes a lot of work to capture 30 employers, less work to capture three. But nevertheless, 
if you have 30 employers with 200 employees each, it makes you a lot less susceptible to downturns in the economy. There be, for this reason, uh, smaller firms have a tendency to be located or to be headquartered locally. Uh, they tend to purchase more goods and services from, from local vendors. When we talk to uh, some of the larger employers in the, in the uh, county, they do all their purchasing through corporate and uh, they can be, goods and services can be purchased from anywhere, uh, not locally necessarily. So it's preferable to, to have a, a number of smaller employers than, than a few large employers. And that's why we, we say that a more diversified and recession-proof economic base is so important to this area, to be less subject to corporate decision-making and, and, and uh, fluctuations in the economy. Federal employers are part of that process. Second guiding principle is a business um, environment compatible with a natural environment and quality of life. Well, that goes without saying. We're beyond the year of smokestacks and, uh, and pollutant-oriented uh, uh, industries now. You want businesses that are environmentally friendly and friendly to the quality of life in the community. Third uh, important principle is an educated and skilled workforce prepared for contemporary and emerging businesses and industries. Contemporary means employers that you already have and industries uh, that you already have that required skilled machinists, aircraft mechanics, things of that nature. But emerging businesses and industries, you need a skilled and educated workforce that understands uh, and uh, is in the IT sector and, and, uh, and so on, uh, or knowledge, you know, in knowledge-based industries. So you need both. You need uh, workers that can not only meet the demands of existing industries, which may be more blue collar, but they also need to be uh, there to meet the demands of, of new industries, which may be more professional and technical uh, oriented, computer driven industries. The fourth principle is a business environment providing opportunities for entrepreneurs and small business. That's important. I mean, you know, there's, a, there's a new term going around in economic development circles called economic gardening, uh, which means growing your own jobs, you know, creating an environment that will foster, uh, entre that'll, that'll uh, inspire entrepreneurs and foster the creation of small businesses. You have a number of those in the community already, and uh, they provide a, a good base for generating additional activity. But I think I made this uh, comment to, the, to a meeting of the Community Foundation when they came out with their strategic plan that focused on their economic development uh, uh, initiative focused on small business. And I said to them, I said, small business, absolutely, you've got to provide opportunities for small business. But the best opportunities for small businesses are having large businesses in the community that drive the economy and create the kind of environment that, that foster creation of small business. An economy can't function on firms of, you know, five or 10 or 20 people alone. It needs those big, the elephants, if you will, uh, to, to create uh, opportunities for small business. The fifth, but not necessarily important, in, uh, ranked in importance, um, guiding principle is an attractive, inviting, and vibrant Hagerstown City Center. I can't tell you how important it is that the, uh, to any community, that your principal city um, be uh, an attractive and inviting place. A rundown, uh, unkempt center city is not the key to success. Um, it's important from the point of view of image and civic pride that the center city of your, of your principal city be a, a place that people want to come, people want to go. So that's so important to the, not only the local quality of life, but attracting professionals and, and businesses, uh, you know, the, as a source of civic pride, 
Um, it, it represents what a community thinks about itself, and that's very important. And then last but not least is a business environment providing opportunities in small towns and rural agricultural areas. Um, you have some wonderful small towns around the county, very attractive. Uh, and uh, they're farming communities, some are evolving into tourist communities. Um, as I said before, farming represents, or agriculture represents 40% of the land area of the county. It's important that that be preserved. I mean, one of the wonderful, the wonderful things about Washington County is the, its, it's, it's attractiveness of its, the attractiveness of its uh, open farmland. Uh, you want to maintain that. So economic development is as much about providing growth opportunities, business opportunities in the rural agricultural areas as, as it is about preserving uh, that, the, the very presence of uh, those wonderful farmlands that exist out there. We've identified uh, several economic clusters, we call them, and target industries within, within each cluster that we feel provide the best opportunity for economic growth uh, in your area. And these are based on a number of things. These are based on what you already have um, because the existing industries that you have provide a base for attracting others like it because labor is uh, similar uh, and so on. So, so when you have a large industry or, or industrial sector that is, say, involved in aircraft uh, maintenance and so on, that, that stimulates interest by others in the same industry. Um, it's also related to the types of industries that are being promoted for the state by the State Department of Business and Economic Development. You want to be able to capture some of that activity that the state is promoting within the state. So it's important that, that, that those are opportunities be recognized as well. So based upon those factors, we've recommended that uh, one, two, three, four, seven, seven clusters, aircraft and aviation technologies and services. Well, you have a good base. You have a good start. You have a tradition in aviation and aircraft manufacturing with Fairchild, obviously. Sierra Nevada, you're the headquarters for their integrated systems, integrated mission systems uh, division or subsidiary, and several other small uh, firms that are in the aviation and aircraft industry uh, uh, business. Product development and advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing generally means computer-driven or computer-related uh, types of uh, manufacturing processes um, and precision machining. Product development means you're not, only you're not only assembling a product, but you're developing the product. You're designing and developing the product, like Volvo does with uh, truck transmissions, truck engines, and others do as well. So, so you, want, you want the research side as, you, as well as the production side, product development, advanced manufacturing. In the automotive sector, which Volvo represents and others, uh, in the machining and in, in, uh, metal products industry, like Synetic Landis and others, Central Precision in Boonesboro, and there are many others. Printing and publishing, this is a big uh, industry in the, in the Cumberland Valley. Um, printing and publishing. Uh, down the road in Berkeley County, they have uh, Quad Graphics. You have a number of firms here, Lehigh, HBP, and others. And analytical equipment for the medical industry, for the agricultural industry, and others. And for the you know, aircraft and, and automotive industries. You have a lot of small firms that produce uh, analytical equipment, testing equipment, testing procedures. The third uh, cluster is distribution and logistics. Well, you only have to look at what's going on in Hopewell Valley to understand that you're already there. Uh, 80, the intersection of 81 and 70 makes you automatically a distribution hub. The hub city, you're capitalizing on that name. And there's more out there, especially, as I said before, if 
putting tolls on I-95 in North Carolina and Virginia begins to shift more activity to the I-81, I-75 corridor. Business and financial services. Well, you have two big firms already in that area uh, with Citi and, uh, and First Data, Merkle Response Services, which is headquartered here, and, and several others that are in that business and financial services, back office operations, call centers, things of that nature. Information technologies and services sort of is an overlap with business and financial services since they all relate to information technology and information management. But smaller firms that, uh, that are very high tech oriented. I was impressed by the number of web design, computer systems design, uh, and I, other IT uh, functions uh, in uh, communications, the Intel, IntelSat Mountain Mountainside Teleport Center. You have a number of firms that, uh, that are in this sector that provide a good springboard for growth. The T. Rowe Price Data Center at the Friendship Technology Park is illustrative. Uh, General Dynamics Information Technology a uh, number of firms that provide uh, a sense that you can grow further in that sector. And then last but not least, agriculture and agribusiness. We want to preserve that farmland. We want to provide a basis for uh, further income growth on the part of farmers and, and agribusiness activities. There are, you know, there are already a number of wineries and creameries and, and uh, fruit mar uh, pr uh, produce markets and so on. I think there's an opportunity for further growth, especially if you tie it into a tourist uh, attraction. And then arts, culture, and tourism. Um, you have the, 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 the basis for, a, I think, a, what could become a significant industry in uh, arts, culture, and tourism. Okay, we, uh, we've been asked to identify five areas of the community that we feel have, have, uh, should have priority for investment, for development. Of, of their economic potential. And we've identified uh, five of them, as shown. Um, Hagerstown Regional Airport. There's an enterprise zone there, um, a, a major airport, a significant industrial presence or business presence already in the area with Lehigh Phoenix and, and Sierra Nevada. City is right there. Uh, so that's a significant economic node that has other potential. Uh, there are something like 2,000 acres of land up there that are designated for industrial or business development, uh, most of which are not developed. Uh, so there's, there really is an opportunity there, and an opportunity as well to capture, you know, the labor market from um, from Franklin County. Hopewell Valley is already becoming established, or is established as your major the major focus of your distribution and logistics industry, and there's more opportunity for growth there significantly more. In fact, the county comprehensive plan has lands designated north of uh, National Pike uh, in the northern part of the Hopewell Valley for uh, business development or economic development. So there's, uh, I think there's a total, we've identified a total of uh, 3,000 acres in that area, maybe up to five, uh, and a lot of that's designated as an enterprise zone. The Mount Etna Technology Park um, between Hagerstown Community College and, and, uh, and the Meritus Health Complex, uh, a new uh, technology park recently purchased and established by Chief, uh, really has some opportunity to capitalize on the, the presence of those two facilities as a, as a high-end suburban office research technology park. Hagerstown City Center. Um, I mean, there's there's a tremendous potential associated with the, the city center, the multi-use complex, uh, and other types of activities in the arts and entertainment district, uh, the Barbara Ingram School, um, the new library. Create the kind of energy necessary to to help drive additional development, and what we call the I. 70 technology park area along I-70, sort of incorporating the Friendship Technology Park and all the high-tech stuff there 
and the Review and Herald Publishing Association property, which is a major employer, and the, um, uh, the Hagerstown Premium Outlets. So that we see that as kind of a mixed use combination of light industrial, office research, uh, destination retail type uh, uh, area. There are others as well um, that, that uh, deserve some consideration. Uh, the gateway area to uh, uh, Hagerstown at the I-40, uh, the east end, the dual highway, um, I-70 interchange area. Uh, the east end area, if, uh, if indeed there is some success in, in relocating the uh, existing Hagerstown or the existing stadium uh, to downtown, then the east end area with the, the old stadium site, the nearby industrial site and the power plant site, all of that represents an opportunity for redevelopment. Then Fort Ritchie, we'll talk more about that, and Hancock. Hancock sitting out there on the western end of your county with an 1,850-acre 1800, enterprise zone. Not all of that's developable, a lot of it's hilly, but some of it is, and, and perhaps that has some opportunity. Economic development uh, certainly involves a lot of different uh, issues and aspects of the community, as shown by the uh, subjects on this slide. In order to prepare and position a community, a community adequately to attract and sustain business, both large and small, and to market that community effectively to the outside world, as well as to its own population, a lot of things have to happen. And these, uh, these subjects, these seven subjects, are indicative of, of, uh, of those things that need to be addressed as part of an overall economic development strategy. The first, uh, organizational structure and performance. And I'll, well, I'll explain uh, what each of these are in some detail. Marketing and communications. That's getting the word out. Infrastructure and site development. You need sites, you need buildings for companies to locate on and in. Education and workforce development. Obviously, you need to position and prepare the, the workforce for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Entrepreneurism and small business development, uh, creating opportunities for these businesses to start up and, and to flourish. Strengthening uh, the city center of Hagerstown. Again, you're the, this is the focal point of the region. Um, and needs, needs attention. And then other strategic initiatives, and we'll explain what those are. We were asked to evaluate whether or not the existing Economic Development uh, Commission approach was the, the, uh, uh, was the help put the best foot forward for Hagerstown, Washington County in terms of uh, organizing and promoting economic development. Uh, there apparently were some questions about the effectiveness of the, of the organization, whether it was the right thing, right approach. Um, and, uh, and so we evaluated that and, and have some assessments and recommendations as part of the plan. There are three basically three types of uh, approaches, organizational approaches to economic development. Um, one is the public, public uh, sector approach, which is uh, essentially uh, represented by a county level department. Um, and that seems to be the format, uh, the typical format in Maryland where you have county economic development departments, Frederick County, for example as an economic development department, and many others do in the state of Maryland. So that's one format. The EDC, the existing EDC, is in effect a county department, the way it's presently, or county employees, is presently set up as a county department, but has an overlay of a private sector and some ex officio public sector members commission, which uh, by ordinance has certain roles and responsibilities, so it's a, it's a hybrid case. It's a variation of what I'll call the public sector approach. Then you have the, the, uh, the kind that's full, fully private, a private economic development entity. And most often these are sort of uh, um, parts of uh, regional or, and local chambers of commerce. 
many chambers of commerce have uh, economic development functions. In fact, several of the communities that we profiled in our competitive economic scorecard, like Asheville, like uh, Bowling Green and others, have the Chamber of Commerce approach, where the Chamber of Commerce is not only the local promotional business promotion organization, but also has an economic development role. And some also have a role in tourism development. And then there's the, uh, the third approach, which I'll call a public-private partnership. These are entities that uh, typically 501c3 or 501c6 nonprofit corporations that have public as well as private input. They may, may be financed in whole or part by the public sector, county and city governments, uh, but they are largely private organizations that are separate from government. They're not part of the government structure, even though they may be funded in part or in whole. And it's been our experience that that public-private partnership works most effectively. Um, in fact, most of the community, the majority of communities in our competitive scorecard have that approach. Franklin County, Pennsylvania is a public-private partnership. It's a development authority, development corporation, to be, uh, to be corrected. Uh, and Cumberland County, Pennsylvania is also a development corporation, a private nonprofit corporation that receives public funding in whole or part. Um, that's the Pennsylvania format. And it's the, and it's the format used in many places and with great effectiveness. Um, and some communities in Maryland are tending in that direction. Um, specifically, Anne Arundel County and the city of Annapolis have established these corporations where, for example, in Anne Arundel County, they privatized the, what used to be a department and, and, uh, and structured it as a nonprofit uh, corp 501c3 corporation, receiving county funds, not entirely county funds, but uh, a lot of county funds in the process. The, uh, the private nonprofit corporation or partnership allows you to have more operational independence from government and provides greater access to uh, other sources of funds, private contributions. For example, uh, chambers of commerce, commerce are typically supported by private, con um, private contributions private memberships and so on. So um, when we looked at the EDC, um, we like it, we like the structure of, we like the structure, the, the, the fact that it is a, uh, it does involve the private sector through the commission and the commission has governance over a lot of what the EDC does. I like that. I like that public sector input. Um, on the other hand, it tends to be perceived as a county, as county, uh, and not city. Um, and that's certainly not the intent, but that may be the, be the perception. Um, and, and for the reason that it has half a foot, I guess, it, in government, is it doesn't tend to behave like the private sector, which a private-public partnership can behave more like a business. Um, private business. In fact, the a chief executive is called the president CEO of a partnership as opposed to an executive director or a director, which is more of a governmental title. So um, we suggested as an option, uh, if it made sense here, is to explore privatizing the existing EDC. It can still be called the EDC. It'll be, it would However, it would be a corporation, an economic development corporation, private nonprofit, as opposed to a, an effect in EDC county department. I think it's food for thought. Um, and it may allow you greater access to other, it may allow the, the, the entity greater access to other types of funding, private contributions uh, and, and foundation grants and so on. Uh, Chief, uh, the Industrial Foundation has a similar structure um, and can operate obviously more as a business entity than as a governmental entity. So there are some advantages 
and, and perceptions of these types of partnerships are greater in the marketplace than a county entity. So I think it bears looking into, um, which is not to suggest that the EDC, as it presently stands, is not or can't be an effective organization. Um, I think, too, that there are certain advantages in combining city and county marketing, inter, um, economic development marketing uh, activities. The county, through its community and economic development department, uh, has certain marketing functions which I think can more beneficially be uh, combined with the EDC marketing functions into a single marketing entity because after all that is the function of, a, of an EDC, a corporation or, or an economic development commission is to market the county in the, most, uh, in the most effective way. So those marketing functions that the city may have presently I think can beneficially be merged into into, into the same organization, I think that should be investigated. One of the problems that exists, I mentioned the, the spirit of volunteerism and community involvement that exists in the community, which is great if everybody was sort of on the same page. Um, I think there needs to be more cross-breeding, or if you will, cross-membership among allied organizations so that the Chamber and the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the EDC and the Greater Hagerstown Committee and what have you talk to one another on a more frequent basis. So more interchange not only at the executive level but more interchange on board memberships, more cross membership I think is, is, a, is a useful thing to pursue. I also think that if indeed the decision is made to become a nonprofit corporation which again would be more separate from government, uh, the benefits of relocating the EDC to a, a, a downtown space that would be either uh, co-located -lo with, with uh, allied organizations or located clo in closer proximity would be beneficial with uh, convenient parking for uh, businesses to, you know, to, uh, to utilize. So the benefits of relocating an EDC office, if it becomes a corporation, or even if not, I think to, a, to another location might be beneficial. So it may be perceived as less county, if you will. I think that the, uh, there are benefits to expand relationships and collaborations with Chief. Chief is a public or is a nonprofit uh, corporation involved in providing product industrial product and there's some certainly some uh, beneficial relationships uh, I know that uh, Greg is a is a member of the EDC board and I think it, it's to, to uh, everybody's benefit that uh, the EDC however it's formed ultimately and chief become close collaborators and that should be the same should be said of Hagerstown Community College which is the chief uh, workforce uh, preparer in the community and also has a business incubator. There needs to be some uh, very close cooperation among these entities for the benefit of the whole county. I think there, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to attend, Bob Leake who had joined me in attending um, an economic summit, which I think Hal Lucas put together uh, last uh, June um, in the church right across the street. And which was great. It was it was good to have uh, all various interests uh, represented. I think there were over 100 people or something like that, um, and everybody had a chance to tell what their concerns were and so on. And we made a presentation of what we were proposing to do as part of the strategic plan. But I think that kind of an economic summit annually is a good idea and should be, should be under, undertaken. And maybe it can be a joint effort between allied organizations, the EDC, the Chamber, the Greater Hagerstown Committee, the, the uh, um, Convention and Visitors Bureau. Then these are, these are sort of housekeeping things. They're, you know, EDC should prepare an annual report as, a lot of, as most public-private corporate entities are supposed to do. Um, uh, annual re uh, report profiling activities and accomplishments during the year and what things are, need to be done or will be done during the coming year. Um, and to 
provide more assurance that uh, er everybody's sort of on the right page and on the right track to develop a set of performance metrics to monitor and evaluate uh, the EDC and community progress in implementing the plan. Now, what do we mean by performance metrics? They can be, you know, number of trade shows uh, attended, um, number of contacts uh, made with, uh, with site selectors and allies like the, uh, the uh, State Department of Business and Economic Development, can be the number of new jobs created in a year, um, number of, uh, you know, site visits, uh, number of fam familiarization tours with uh, site consultants, a whole variety of things. And that needs to be left up to the whoever becomes the new president or executive director and the board to determine what the performance metrics are for that particular year. And they may vary. I mean, obviously, you can't have number of jobs as a performance metric or a certain ex, you know, definite number of jobs if you're in a down economy. You want to hold on to what you have. You don't, it may be difficult to create any new jobs, but you want to hold on to what you have. So the performance metrics tend to change uh, as conditions change, and that should be left up to the, we're not going to prescribe them. We have some thoughts. <coughs> But uh, you know, it's up to the new director, president, and board to determine what those are in implementing the plan. And then I mentioned uh, access to funding. If, if the EDC evolves into a corporation, a public-private uh, nonprofit corporation, you'll then have the ability or it, the entity will then have the ability to develop uh, loan programs accessing federal uh, and uh, fed various federal loan programs to create your own revolving uh, loan programs for tech startups and small business uh, small businesses um, and of course activity should be coordinated with the small business development technical uh, council technology council and the tri-county council the tri-county council for western maryland i don't know how many of you are familiar with that but they're a regional entity uh, responsible for certain aspects of development and transportation and social services in Garrett, Allegheny, and, and, uh, and Washington County. But they have a revolving loan program, too, for small businesses. Um, so far, most of the, uh, the activity seems to be focused on Allegheny County. They're located in Allegheny County. And, and uh, to, in as much as they exist, uh, it's up to Washington County to be uh, aware that they exist and, and, and capitalize more on opportunities associated with that. But in any case, the e e D an economic development corporation would have an opportunity to develop its own loan programs and, 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 uh, and focus uh, strictly on uh, Washington County startup opportunities. So there's a lot to be considered in in looking at the proper organizational structure and, and once establishing the proper organizational structure, how to best carry out that, uh, that structure and, and, and mission. Um, these, uh, these points that are listed are among the various points that we included in the strategic plan. I didn't include all of them. Uh, they just include some of them, but uh, it's, it will be a lot of work ahead, uh, a lot of thinking ahead by the county, by the EDC board and, and, uh, and others as to how to best proceed with uh, the uh, structure and function of an economic development organization. Marketing and communications, getting the word out, not only convincing residents uh, of Washington County and Hagerstown that economic development is important and should be supported, but also getting the word out beyond the borders of the county so that the, the outside world is aware of you, aware of your opportunities, um, and, and your, your brand and market is being effectively pursued. Uh, branding. Um, what do we mean? Branding is sort of a, a broad topic. It involves, uh, I guess, slogans and, and uh, um, common uh, advertising and, and so on. We think, we've always found, for example, that um, economic development and tourism development, especially if they're handled by two separate entities, as in the case here, 
they're sort of marketed as two separate things. I mean, there's not a common brand or a common uh, common theme. And and certainly assets that are promoted as uh, in, in tourism are important to new businesses and employees associated with new businesses because it's always been our contention that those features of a community that attract tourists will also attract in, you know, residents and employees. Um, if there are more restaurants, uh, more physical attractions, uh, uh, recreational attractions and so on, that's a quality of life uh, factor too and that, uh, that, uh, that applies to economic development. So there's a real benefit in coordinating tourism marketing and economic development marketing and that very rarely occurs. And I suspect more can be done here. Um, so we would, we would hope that the, the city, uh, the EDC, the city, um, uh, Department of Economic Business or Community and Economic Development, the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Chamber can um, come up with a, a strategy that benefits all, a branding strategy. Now what is a, what is a branding strategy? Maybe um, a certain slogan or slogans or, or markets that you advertise to could be a, could be a various uh, could be various things. We like the the fact that uh, you know we, we think that more can be made of Hub City. Hub City says a lot. Um, and uh, you know when we looked at uh, other communities, Spartanburg, South Carolina, is also called a Hub City. A crossroads of the Mid Atlantic, crossroads of the Civil War. Uh, Fredericksburg, uh, Spotsylvania County, um, Virginia is a crossroads of the Civil War. That's, that's one of their brands. So all of these slogans, all of these phrases are, are important and, and can be worked into mutual um, promotional uh, media and, and activities. And I think it would be beneficial for the entities involved in one or another form of economic development to agree and cooperate on um, some common themes and some common brands. What those ultimately will become is, uh, is not, not yet known, but I, I think I, I certainly would capitalize on the hub city, the crossroads of the mid-Atlantic. You are a crossroads of the mid-Atlantic and the crossroads of the Civil War. Those are recognizable terms that uh, people can over time associate with Hagerstown and Washington County. Business attraction, um, we've identified the seven target areas, uh, which you've seen previously, the, air, the aircraft and, air, and uh, aviation, the product development, advanced manufacturing, information technology, et cetera, et cetera. There needs to be a, uh, an annual program, and this is up to the president and director of the EDC and the board to develop and implement an annual proactive plan to attract new targeted businesses and industries to the area. Uh, I say proactive, you have to go out and you have to just can't sit back in, in the office and hope that businesses come to you. You have to go after them aggressively. And the best way to do that is through your uh, state uh, and regional allies. For example, uh, the Department, Maryland Department of Business and Economic Development receives leads every day people looking at opportunities in Maryland. And you literally need to camp out in Baltimore uh, with these people and provide them all the information they need so that uh, you're at the top of their list. Um, you're up there with uh, the Montgomery counties, the uh, Baltimore counties, the Anne Arundel counties, and so on. You really have to do a good job of proactively marketing those people that get the leads and site consultants. Site consultants are another important source of leads. Uh, the site consultants, and there are just a handful of them that are, you know, control most of the business out there, and Lee Goforth are, you know, among them. Um, they need to know about Washington County uh, through trade shows, through contacts, uh, what we call FAM tours, which are inviting site consultants. I know you've done that in the past. The EDC has done that in the past, inviting site consultants in for a weekend to show them sites and, and opportunities in the area. But the, that's a proactive form of marketing. And you need to seek out those 
those sectors that, uh, that really have some potential, the data center sector. Uh, you need to proactively go after things like this, the, air, the aircraft and aviation sector. The air, airport marketing plan will tell us uh, what the opportunities are there, and I'll talk more about that. But uh, the key is proactive uh, marketing. At the same time, you want to keep what you have, and that's where business retention comes in. And that's a hands-on approach to um, making sure that uh, you uh, recognize the needs of existing industry and can help them deal with the issues that they have at hand. Not that you can solve every one, but I think it's the, the EDC uh, and the county commission have a terrific program where every week they go out and visit, I think it's one or two uh, industries, existing industries, and listen to, you know, just get acquainted and listen to their, uh, and talk about their needs and areas of interest and so on. And that's, uh, that's important. That's important to uh, put a hand out, reach a hand out to your existing industries because you want to keep them. Uh, they're hard to replace if, if, if you lose them. You may lose them anyway through corporate decision making that's off-site. You can't do anything about it, but um, by the same token, if they know you're interested in them, uh, maybe then uh, more interested in, in their subsidiary than another community is interested in their subsidiary, they'll keep yours and won't keep somebody else's. So, so it's important to communicate uh, as frequently as possible and recognize uh, existing industries, and that's business retention. Very, it's as important as business attraction. And here again, uh, these two things are housekeeping. Uh, the, the EDC website needs to be updated uh, um, ongoing, really, periodically, uh, to have the latest information on target industries, on site data, and uh, links to, one of the things that uh, you should have is links to local allies. In fact, the, the Chamber, the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, the City Department of uh, Economic and Community and Economic Development all need to be and DBED, all need to be interlinked on everybody on each other's websites uh, so that uh, the site consultants um, uh, and others can easily access the information they need on, on the area. Um, also important uh, in area of housekeeping is to make sure that the uh, state database, building and site database, is up to date. We looked at what you have in uh, the EDC has in its database and the state, and they're different, and they, they need to be uh, they need to be uniform. And and uh, so it's incumbent on the EDC to keep help keep the state database up to date, so they have uh, they have all the information that you have. Federal outreach. I want to dwell on this a little bit. Um, and this gets back to the recession proof. The, uh, even though we're, you know, we may have some budget difficulties uh, in certain aspects of the federal government in the days ahead, it is a fairly uniform and stable source of employment. And every other community in the region has done quite well in the federal sector, frankly. Obviously, Frederick has uh, Fort Detrick and the, all the uh, uh, tenant uh, agencies and, and uh, contractors that feed off those tenant agencies, um, you know, creates a lot of wealth and, and opportunity in, in Frederick County. And you, you get some spillover where a lot of people from, uh, from this area work in, in those, uh, those, eight, those areas. Um, down in Berkeley County, uh, Martinsburg area, they've been very successful, obviously, thanks to Senator Byrd in, uh, in having captured a lot of uh, federal activity, the Coast Guard uh, offices, uh, the Internal Revenue Service, and others. Uh, Frederick County, Virginia, the Warrenton area, or um, not Warrenton, uh, Winchester area has been successful. Franklin County uh, and Cumberland County to your north have a number of federal installations. Um, and Washington County is sort of the hole in the donut. Uh, there's very little federal activity. Obviously, Fort Ritchie closed. You have some GSA rented space in, uh, in Hopewell Valley for storage activities, but very little federal activity. Sierra Nevada serves the federal government, um, 
homeland security and defense. But other than that, you don't have any, you don't have any, hardly anything in the way of direct federal installations and offices here. And I think that's, a, that's an area of, uh, of concern and an area that you need to focus on in terms of capturing some federal activity. You're outside the blast zone, I'm told, which I guess is a 60 mile radius around Washington, um, so that you have an opportunity to, uh, to capture some relocation of federal agencies and, and branching of federal agencies and operations. That should be a major business outreach function of the EDC. I was very impressed with the number of corporate headquarters there are in Washington County. And I don't mean, you know, the, the, the whole corporation, but I, I, you know, regional offices, branch offices, subsidiaries, and so on that are, that are located here in Washington County. And the, the graphic shows Merkel Response Services, which is part of the Merkel Group, but it's a 500 and some odd uh, employee firm that's headquartered here. Volvo Powertrain, the unit of, of Volvo Group, is headquartered here. Uh, Ved, Volvo Powertrain North America. And there are a number, uh, Sierra Nevada's Integrated Mission Systems Group is headquartered here. Uh, and there are a number of those like that. And those need to be, the fact, the presence of these headquarters needs to be part of the marketing strategy, part of the branding, if you will. Um, you're very fortunate, and that's, that's very telling. In order to, to say that your headquarters location is, is, uh, is very favorable in terms of trying to attract other headquarters locations. It means you have something going for you uh, in, in terms of business and quality of life that, uh, that uh, corporate uh, entities uh, can relate to. The uh, airport marketing plan, that's underway. Apparently it just began. Um, consultant was hired and I think uh, somebody is here in the room uh, representing that. Uh, and um, it's supposed to look at not only opportunities or uh, needs and opportunities for improving uh, the aviation side of things, but also business opportunities in and around the airport. So it'll be interesting to see the results of that and, and the uh, business opportunities that are associated with that plan should in, be incorporated into the marketing efforts uh, here as well. Uh, Maryland Inland Port. Um, there's no Maryland Inland Port uh, in the I-81 corridor, which is a hot corridor now for these what they call inland, you know, distribution centers, integrated uh, or intermodal terminals and um, consolidation terminals uh, that are associated with a port. Uh, there's nothing associated directly with the Port of Baltimore. Um, now there is an inland port in, in, uh, in uh, Front Royal, uh, it's, a, it's a Virginia facility, and I guess it's a, a, a attached to a Norfolk. Um, and, and there are intermodal terminals, uh, I guess CSX and Norfolk Southern have intermodal terminals in Chambersburg and, and Carlisle. Um, and uh, Berkeley County, uh, the Martinsburg area, investigated the feasibility of an inland port for West Virginia and found the, the, because of the presence of all these other ones in the I-81 corridor, essentially, it wasn't feasible. But they were so they were going to connect that also to um, uh, either Richmond or or uh, or Norfolk. There's nothing really associated inland port associated with the port of Baltimore. I think it's worth investigating. Uh, it may go nowhere, but I think at least is worth investigating as an opportunity for for this area. Is uh, and uh, some discussions with the Maryland Port Administration are recommended. Hagerstown metropolitan area. I think there's a real opportunity to expand the Hagerstown metropolitan area to include Franklin County, Pennsylvania. You already have 10, 10 I think it's nine, nine or 10,000 inbound workers come in from Franklin County to work in, in Hagerstown, Washington County presently. So the economic ties are there. The Hagerstown MSA presently includes uh, Morgan and, and uh, um, Berkeley County in West Virginia and Washington County 
uh, here. But the, clo the ties are even closer to Franklin County. And as it is, the MSA population in 2010, I think, is something like 260,000 or 70,000, which is a, a nice size market. But wouldn't it be nice if, if Hagerstown could advertise itself as a center of a 400,000 plus market? That makes you a lot more attractive to businesses uh, seeking to locate and seeking to do business uh, within your area. So I think there's a benefit to trying, exploring with the OMB and Franklin County, the opportunities to integrate Franklin County into the Hagerstown MSA from a marketing point of view. So we recommend that be explored. Here are three, three things relating to tourism. First is Wood, Woodmont Lodge, which is a wonderful property. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with up in the, the Hancock area. Uh, used to be the Woodmont uh, Rod and Gun Club, which was a host of presidents, senators, sports personalities, entertainment personalities, and so on. It's now owned by the state um, and is, in our view, underutilized. I was showing Stu Mullendor yesterday this Orvis catalog that, uh, that I received recently, and it profiles all these wonderful hunting and fishing lodges all over the country, some of them not much bigger or about the same size as Woodmont. And from a tourist point of view, I, it, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be uh, a great idea to try to return that to the uh, level of, of uh, attraction that it once, it once was and could be again? Um, I, I, it's owned by the state. It's leased to the Isaac Walton League. Uh, and the Isaac Walton League has some public use of the facility, but I think it's still underutilized and opportunities to <clears throat> build it into more of an attraction should be investigated. Now, why do we pick on that as one? I think there's a, you know, tourism is a big industry in this area, but in our view, it's uh, not generating the level of what we'll call heads and beds that it could be. Uh, tourism in Washington County is, for the most part, a day tripper, a day destination. Uh, you know, people may come up from Berkeley, or Martinsburg, to go to the mall, or the, uh, the outlet mall, down from Green Castle, what have you, um, and drive, drive in to see some of the other attractions, the canal in uh, Hancock or, uh, or uh, Williamsport. Um, but it's largely a day destination. The real impact of tourism occurs when you're bringing people in here for overnight stays. So what can you do to do that? It seems to me that one of those ingredients um, is the Woodmont Lodge. Not a, not, a big, not a big ingredient, but one of those things needed to generate heads and beds. Uh, another one is countryside touring. We noticed that for the most part, and this is true of any area, attractions tend to be promoted as, as individual places. There's not a networking of, of places to visit involved. Uh, there are not maps and self-guided tours that are available so that you, you can integrate bed and breakfasts and small towns and agricultural attractions and museums and what have you uh, as a package where you can encourage people to stay, you know, overnight one or two or three nights in an area. So we think this is a, um, an opportunity that's, that's, uh, that's uh, not really being taken full advantage of because there's some wonderful attractions here in the county, terrific little B&Bs, uh, not the least of which is in Boonesboro, and other places that could be very attractive as part of a tour package for for, for people, uh, couples, families seeking to, you know, see these attractions and stay a couple of nights in the area and spend money at restaurants and, and what have you, not just come in and out. Um, again, generating heads and beds. Destination retail. You have the uh, Hagerstown um, factory outlets. That's certainly a destination retail facility, but again, it primarily it attracts um, day visitors. 
from surrounding counties and, 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 the, and Washington County. We feel it's, uh, in, it's, it would be opportune to investigate opportunities to attract a Cabela's or a Bass Pro Shop outdoor superstore to the area. Uh, I think Cabela's was uh, looking at, at this area a few years ago. The economy tanked and, and, uh, and they've, uh, you know, they stopped looking, but uh, that opportunity exists. They've, they're opening a new uh, facility in, in uh, for example, in, in, uh, in Maryland or in Delaware, uh, Christ Christina, Delaware, north of uh, Baltimore, and they have a couple of further south in West Virginia, but the uh, intersection of I-81 and, and, uh, and I-70 and all the natural amenities that uh, abound in the area, this, may, this is an ideal location for that destination superstore. And that generates a lot of hotels and, and a lot of overnight traffic. And uh, that should be considered, again, heads and beds to generate uh, uh, the kind of economic impact that, uh, that's possible. Infrastructure and site development. Clearly, you want to have adequate infrastructure to support uh, growth of business and industry in the area, and you want to have sites, and, and um, transportation is an important part of that. Uh, um, I think uh, there are several initiatives that should be undertaken and are, in effect, underway. Um, proactively promote the widening of I-81 and I-70 uh, to six lanes particularly I-81. Um, your neighbors are doing it. Virginia is actively doing it. Uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, they're all doing, they're all trying to get federal monies to upgrade these important arteries, and you're the linchpin in that, uh, in that whole process. Um, as I said before, I-81 has the second highest truck volume of any highway in Maryland, other than the Cecil County section of I-95. That may change. I-81, if, if uh, tolls are imposed in North Carolina and West Virginia, I-81 will become more prominent as a truck route. Um, it's kind of scary at times to drive on I-81 when you're surrounded by tractor trailers. So there's, a, there's certainly a need and a benefit to trying to widen I-81. And 70, to provide uh, better connections east and west to, uh, to Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Improve the access for Hopewell Valley and Mount Etna Technology Park. Uh, certainly should be high priorities, and I think is, is underway for Mount Etna Technology Park, extending Yale Drive and ultimately providing more access, inter, uh, internal access to Hagerstown or the community college and so on. Hopewell Valley, Every, all the traffic is funneled through uh, the uh, the I-81 interchange at uh, um, Halfway Boulevard, uh, and uh, and that's not that's not beneficial in terms of trying to promote additional development or encourage additional development. There needs to be an outlet to Greencastle Pike, and there needs to be an outlet, another outlet uh, north to uh, I-40 to spread the traffic around and allow more sites to be developed. Um, we understand it's also necessary to construct a new airport tower at uh, Hagerstown Regional Airport because the tower is, it doesn't meet height specifications. It's not in the right place to have a full view of the runway. When the runway was extended, uh, you know, part of the runway uh, disappeared from view. Um, so that needs to be attended to. And then uh, the feasibility of commuter rail service to Hagerstown, uh, Williamsport uh, from DC. Um, obviously, Mark extends to Martinsburg um, and can be accessed there. It can be accessed at Brunswick and Frederick County, but we feel that the, uh, and maybe this has been uh, investigated to death but there's a Norfolk Southern connection from, from Hagerstown uh, in down to uh, an area east of Martinsburg um, and, and a connection from Hagerstown Williamsport to Martinsburg itself. I think in, if, if part of the strategy is to bring this area more into the Washington orbit to establish a closer connection east and west, 
I mean, that, the, that commuter rail service needs to be investigated, the feasibility of extending it somehow uh, to this area. It already goes to downtown Frederick and through the southern part of Frederick County. The uh, present city counter water service pre-annexation issues, I think those are, that's, that's solvable. I mean, that can be done in a number of ways we outlined in our report, uh, but it does need to be resolved so that industries have more certainty of, as to what they can expect. The county, you know, has a story to tell, the city has a story to tell, and everybody's on the same page. Uh, those, are, those are easily addressed and I think uh, need to be addressed. Um, High-speed access, uh, very important quality of life issue and business development issue. Um, um, internet access, including fiber, is pretty abundant in the Hagerstown area, is spotty in the uh, outlying areas of small towns. Uh, there needs to be an assessment of needs and a, and a plan to address those needs especially in outlining, outlining areas. Planning and permitting. Um, said before, one of the weaknesses is the over-regulation of land development, even though there's a pro generally a pro-business climate among the political leaders. It kind of breaks down when you get down to the operational uh, end. So there needs to be a, a review, a thorough review of existing regulations. Um, and those regulations need to be updated as required to make them less cost burdensome, more business friendly, less time consuming, and so on. So especially for new economic development projects where time is important. Uh, companies, when they, when they move, they want to move quickly. So there needs to be some fast track permitting process. Uh, and to some extent, it exists, but as a practical matter, it frequently breaks down. Then I think uh, there should be, we've identified the five uh, primary opportunity areas. There need to be definitive land use plans for those and infrastructure plans for those, each of those primary opportunity areas. Uh, all but one are in the uh, in unincorporated county, so four of those are county responsibility and one is city responsibility, the downtown area. Uh, we'll get more into that in a minute. And then a plan to increase the supply of shovel-ready sites. There's a lot of industrial, industrial uh, land out there designated for development and zoned for development, but very few that can be turned into you know, development sites. And maybe Chief is a part of the uh, solution here uh, because they own uh, several properties, but there should be a, a plan for providing the infrastructure uh, to these sites so that they're ready for development. They can be, you know, you can pull a permit to construct a building tomorrow. Education workforce development is the next topic. Again, as Sue, Stu mentioned, you could probably do a strategic plan for each one of these elements. <laughs> this is a strategic plan for everything. Um, occupational skills development, very important since, uh, you know, the, there was a comment that the, the area lacked an adequate uh, adequate supply of, of skilled labor. Um, there needs to be somebody on top of it, you know, sort of pushing the buttons. Um, initially, we thought the, the, uh, the right approach would be to establish a new workforce development council that could focus on the specific needs of, of Washington County and Hagerstown. Um, we began to think better of that idea because, you know, as I mentioned before, there are so many organizations already and, and uh, to, to a great extent, a few of them are on the same page. So, so the, the, the back off was to um, broaden the mission and function of the EDC uh, Workforce Committee into the Education Workforce Development Committee to develop and coordinate and monitor a plan, a workforce improvement plan, specific to Washington County. Uh, the, the, the workforce, the chief workforce agency for uh, this area is, is the Western Maryland Consortium, but they're challenged to deal with three counties. Their, their, their area is uh, Garrett, Allegheny, and, and Washington County. 
Um, so they're pulled in three directions. We need, we need a, a body in Washington County to focus strictly on Washington County, working with the uh, consortium, but focusing on the needs of the county, working with uh, the community college and the public school system and the business community. And then to develop uh, and implement industry-specific training programs in key industries, uh, like in com computer-controlled machining equipment and uh, uh, robotics, IT technicians, aircraft mechanics. Um, some training presently exists, but those seem to us to be the, the areas that uh, should be focused on most particularly. And then um, some of this may exist informally, but uh, to, uh, many communities have established uh, partnerships between the business community and the educational system, uh, including adopt-a-school programs. You have some large employers out there that can, you know, can in effect uh, adopt a school, uh, provide mentoring, provide uh, plant tours, provide educational formats that, uh, that really interest the kids in, uh, in what's in the business community. Higher education. I mentioned uh, as part of the weaknesses of the Hagerstown, Washington County area is uh, low educational attainment. Um, the percentage of the population with bachelor's and uh, professional and graduate degrees is, is very low compared to many, if not most, other communities that we compared you with. That, that, that's a problem, especially in trying to grow and attract a professional and technical uh, class of worker. So, so we're recommending that uh, EDC, the community college, and the uh, University System of Maryland um, embark on a discussions leading to some strategy for expanding higher education in Hagerstown, Washington County. Initially, I think you want to try to expand uh, and effectively market uh, online and on-site continuing education programs leading to bachelor's degrees involving the community college, the uh, university system, and, and Kaplan University. But ultimately, um, there needs to be a higher education, a full four-year university in this area. You've achieved the size, you've, you've, uh, uh, you're the center of, uh, of a multi-county um, metropolitan area. Hagerstown, Washington County area needs a four-year university. The University System of Maryland is the last two years. Hagerstown Community College is the first two years. Um, you're not a Shippensburg state, uh, you're not, which is up there in Franklin County or right nearby. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, I think, going to be, uh, in our view, one of your challenges is to try to grow the university system at Maryland into a four-year university. Some states are doing it with community colleges. They're transitioning community colleges. My state, for example, Florida, is transitioning all the community colleges to four-year colleges and four-year universities. That may be an option, it may not be, but. I think uh, some focus needs to be uh, placed on trying to grow a four-year university here in, in uh, Washington County. And I would certainly seek support from the governor, the General Assembly, and the Higher Education Commission for that. Get them on board with the idea. Entrepreneurism and small business development. Like the Workforce Development uh, Committee of the EDC, our first inclination was to recommend creation of a small business council, which would be have a, have a sort of a loftier presence, if you will, in the community than a, than a committee of a committee. But having thought about the disconnects between uh, you know existing organizations and so on, perhaps it's not a good idea to suggest that a new organization be formed. Instead, equip the small business development committee of the EDC with the uh, the function and authority to take the lead in, in, in developing with input from the city, 
Department of Community Economic Development, the Small Business Development Tec Technology Council, and Community College develop a small business program for the area. I think part of that, and it should be oriented to tech, primarily tech-oriented startups and small businesses, part of that is to compile a list of existing small tech-oriented firms in the county. There are a number of them. I was surprised. Uh, you won't find them written down in any one place, but I was surprised at the number that exists in the county. The collective presence of those makes it attractive for others to follow suit. So I think uh, just having a list and, uh, you know, um, of who's out there already um, and uh, it it would be a great help in marketing business opportunities in this area. And then a web-based uh, resource center for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Frederick County has an excellent web-based resource center where small businesses and entrepreneurs can go online and download all kinds of stuff and have access to very, you know, a variety of sources to provide advice on how to do business planning, how to, where to get financing and so on. Um, and several other communities that we profiled have the same thing. So there should be a web-based resource center that can be established by the EDC uh, to benefit small businesses and entrepreneurs. And one of the neatest things we found is uh, there were a couple of communities that we found this. One was Johnson City, uh, Tennessee, and the other is Chattanooga, where they have um, what they call the, these, this annual judged program called Will This Float? where entrepreneurs that are seeking venture capital and venture capitalists uh, can, can go. It's a judged competition, annual judge competition among entrepreneurs to determine the best new business concepts uh, in the community. Um, and uh, are, I mean, they, they have attracted a lot of venture capital support and have grown, successfully grown some small businesses into, or ideas, converted ideas into viable businesses and grown small businesses into bigger businesses. So we think that uh, you have all the elements uh, necessary and appropriate to do that kind of a, of a program here as an annual judge competition, a will this float uh, to attract uh, entrepreneurs and, and venture capitalists. And then here again, if, if uh, EDC evolves to a nonprofit uh, corporation structure uh, to evaluate approaches uh, to a small business loan program for qualified high-tech uh, firms, um, that's some of the, something that the EDC as a private nonprofit corporation can offer uh, that the present EDC uh, is unable to. This is, a, this is sort of a favorite topic of mine, uh, strengthening downtown uh, Hagerstown, because this is the heart of the region. The, the quality and the attractiveness of downtown of any center city in a, re in a region or a county is important for the, for the quality of life and economic uh, functioning of the region. Uh, so there are several um, strategies and actions that we've uh, recommended here. Um, the multi-use complex. This could be quite a catalyst to, uh, to downtown. Um, and we, we believe that, uh, that adequate public support and funding to complete the project should be, uh, should be pursued and secured at some point. Uh, we understand it's had some setbacks and, and that happens. I will mention that uh, um, one of the communities that we profiled in our scorecard, Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, a little bit larger than Hagerstown, um, undertook a, a similar project uh, a couple of years ago, and, uh, and successfully so. So they may be a good model to, uh, to look at. The Arts and Entertainment District is a terrific concept um, like that. However, I think that in, uh, it's necessary to create more of a, of a critical mass of activity in a smaller area. The, the, the way the arts uh, district is, uh, is presently structured, it's quite large. And I think a priority development area within that district needs to be defined 
as a basis for you know incentives and or maybe even higher incentives uh, so that so that a critical mass of activity and and uh, can be can be uh, established in a in a more confined area <clears throat> incidentally I, I should back up and say that the concepts and, and actions uh, proposed in the uh, strategic plan are not just the responsibility of the EDC to implement. Um, a lot of players have to become involved in the implementation of these recommendations. The EDC is, is, a, is a lead in several of them and support in several others, but it will require actions on the part of the city government, the county government, uh, the uh, city's Department of Community Economic Development, the, uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and others to implement this. Um, it's just not all the, uh, the, uh, the EDC. So responsibility for these things in, in the, under this subject of strengthening Hagerstown City Center are really city responsibilities. A tax increment finance district. Tax increment financing, for those that may not uh, know what it is entirely, is a means of, of focusing public investments in a, def, in a, def, in a uh, defined area uh, that's, that's uh, adopted by ordinance. Um, it's our understanding that the city, the center city, uh, does not have a, a tax increment district. Most uh, cities do, uh, and it's a way of taking, you know, county uh, funds and city funds and rather than spending them in the general fund all over the place those tax incremental tax revenues are spent within a defined area to make improvements necessary to stimulate um, private investment so we would certainly encourage that such a mechanism be established in the center city uh, in that entertainment district core if you will and then the uh, redevelopment plan for the down center city should be updated. We understand that the uh, existing redevelopment plan may have been prepared sometime in the 90s and probably is out of date and needs to be updated. Apparently this has been talked about for some time as relocating the school board administrative offices downtown, which we think is a great idea. I mean, it, it, it concentrates uh, em employment, helps concentrate employment in the downtown area and I think every opportunity to, to try to accomplish that should be, should be undertaken. Low income housing. Now, this is not easy. Um, take whatever actions uh, can, be, uh, can be undertaken to limit and ultimately reduce the incidence of downtown low income housing. Uh, the recently completed Arts, Washington Arts Council strategic plan uh, said the same thing essentially. They 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 wanted to de deconcentrate uh, poverty. I think is the way they explained it in downtown. Um, that's that's a, a major deterrent to attracting private investment um, because it you know the uh, you don't have the financial support, the economic support for small businesses. Uh, uh, existing small businesses, many have moved uh, from downtown. Uh, it's a real problem, and I think the, the housing providers, social service providers, should be part of the dialogue leading to some plan to, to limit uh, downtown low-income housing, especially in the core of the arts and entertainment district that can be defined. A public nuisance ordinance uh, is probably the, the, in the same category. To the extent that uh, regulations might be appropriate to limit uh, antisocial activities in the priority development area, some sort of a public nuisance policy or ordinance, we believe, and it's been tried successfully in other areas, to at least constrain or limit uh, um, activity that may be a deterrent to people coming from outside to visit downtown. Um, office and retail space inventory. I think it's important that, uh, and the city has done some work in this regard, to inventory existing vacant spaces, including the larger office spaces in the downtown area, and include those larger office spaces in the EDC site inventory. Uh, the EDC site inventory and DBED uh, de 
Maryland's inventory includes some suburban office space, but it doesn't have a real good inventory, in our opinion, downtown office space, and that should be part of the inventory. Downtown employment survey. There's a lot of employment downtown. City and county governments, Department of Social Services, a variety of social service organizations, um, banks, and others. I bet contribute to uh, an employment number that would surprise people. Um, and I talked with uh, the, the uh, city about uh, city staff about doing such a survey um, and uh, just to, to quantify the level of employment that exists downtown which may be attractive to potential retail and service business businesses if uh, if it was discovered that a, a few thousand employees are located within a fairly walkable area of downtown this could be an attractive selling point so I would encourage that some sort of an employment survey be done to establish the kinds of employment uh, levels that are out there and may give people some assurance that opportunities exist to uh, do a business. Now here's, a, here's an opportunity, another opportunity really for the University uh, System of Maryland. Um, down, downtown, downtown Hagerstown has a Maryland theater it's home to the Maryland Symphony. Um, very impressive. It's home to the Barbara Ingram School of the Arts, which itself is impressive and a, and a widely acclaimed facility. Um, we think there's a, every reason to believe that uh, a Maryland School of the Arts and Design is a feasible uh, prospect for downtown Hagerstown building on the uh, Maryland, um, the university system in Maryland. Uh, a college level continuation, if you will, of the Barbara Ingham School, and maybe a broadening of that to include graphic design, not only performing arts and so on, but design and what have you. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the city of Savannah, but uh, the uh, they have a, a facility there, an institution there called SCAD, S-C-A-D, Savannah College of Art and Design, that has single-handedly uh, revitalized downtown Savannah. I mean, it has, it's had such an impact on that community, you wouldn't believe it. There's not much competition out there in Maryland for a school of arts and design, and I think uh, that that is worthy of exploration. Downtown Civic Center, the Greater Hagerstown Committee uh, began studying the concept of a downtown civic center, which a lot of communities have. It's a great source of civic pride, uh, but they suspended study of that uh, pending the outcome of the, of the what I'll call the stadium project, the multi-use center. Um, well, I think that that dialogue should be uh, restarted. Um, and. Uh, you know, by the Greater Hagerstown Committee or others to establish whether or not uh, the city can proceed with some sort of a civic center as, as a meeting place, as, a, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as an activity center of various uh, types. Um, and uh, most, most cities have a civic center. I would say that they, they're not self-amortizing, uh, self that's for sure. They don't make money. Um, and they are barely, can be barely self-supporting, but they're just a great sense, a great source of civic pride and energy in a, in a downtown area of a community. And we believe that idea should be pursued as well. Okay, other strategic initiatives. There are three. Uh, the first deals with small towns and rural agricultural areas. The idea here is we want to, you know, going back to the question earlier, how many of these towns, all the towns were invited to be represented, but we want to make sure and, and uh, that small towns and rural areas are part of the process so that as these business traction and retention programs are developed and implemented annually, opportunities in small towns and rural areas need to be recognized. Um, for example, um, not all the economic growth needs to occur in the greater Hagerstown area. Uh, for example, we, 
in our report, we, sh we show that uh, places like Hancock have uh, uh, companies like Raylock and Saputo Cheese and uh, Evolve Composites and Boonesboro has uh, uh, Central Precision and, and, uh, and, and the Emerging Science and Technology uh, firm and uh, Smithsburg has uh, PhilTech and Performance Pipe and Hadley Farms Bakery and what have you. So, and these are all, you know, f most of them are fairly good size employers, 50 to 100 people. Um, and so, you know, opportunities exist in small towns to support that level of development and should continue to have those, uh, those opportunities. So, so we wanna make sure that, uh, that any business attraction and retention program involve those small communities. Um, sim similarly, workforce and small business development programs. To us, agriculture, farming is the quintessential small business. While we wanna focus primarily on, in terms of uh, greatest use of resources on tech-oriented startups which have opportunities to grow and pay high wages, uh, we don't want to overlook opportunities for small business development and, and training workforce to, to uh, be able to deal with uh, businesses that benefit the small towns and rural areas. Like Central Precision uh, is a machining company, just like Synetic Landis is a Sanidi, uh, machining company. Um, so, so the workforce issues that apply to the greater Hagerstown area also apply to the small town. So, so um, for those of you who are concerned about the, the fate and future of small towns, it's certainly uh, was our intent through the strategic plan recommendations that we made that they be fully engaged in the process. And in that regard, uh, the last bullet says conduct annual development form focusing on the needs and opportunities in these areas. Just like we call for an economic summit, uh, we think that uh, that approach should be extended to the small communities and the rural areas to have an opportunity to be heard and, and, uh, and so on. So, so an economic development forum for these areas I think is very important. What to do with Fort Ritchie? It's, uh, uh, there are many ideas out there and, and, uh, and clearly uh, one concept uh, uh, that, that came about was the corporate uh, office properties trust concept. Uh, they bought the property and had to uh, sell it back um, because of the collapse of the real estate uh, market and several other factors, the lawsuit and so on. But they're, they're a big player. Copti is a big player in the Washington DC office market. They know what's going on. I have to think, the, and I haven't talked to their planners and designers and so on, but I have to think that uh, um, it would be beneficial now that the real estate market is bottomed and appears to be coming back, not to necessarily get them back involved, but to pick their brains on what their thinking was, because that thinking may still be valid, especially in, a, in an economy that appears to be uh, regaining strength. Um, they're smart people uh, and they know what's going on. If they felt there was an opportunity to capture federal business, federal agencies, uh, various types in their development concept, um, those opportunities may be worth pursuing. Um, I'm aware that some inventories of buildings and and infrastructure have been made. I, I probably haven't seen all that exists out there, but. Uh, to the extent that it's needed to create feasible plans for redevelopment of, of Fort uh, Ritchie. Um, those inventories of buildings and, and infrastructure, especially communications and roads and utilities, need to be um, uh, pursued or uh, uh, updated. And then ultimately, based upon revisiting some of the Copti concepts and other, other things that have been discussed, uh, you know, corporate retreat, uh, recreation area, et cetera, et cetera, to do a, a detailed market and financial feasibility study of alternative uses, uh, and then identify the best use or mix of use and plan and market uh, the property ac accordingly, whatever that is. 
Uh, there are a number of you, it's a remarkable property. I mean, I think it's very unique. And clearly it has to have some potential to the right user or users. Uh, who they are, uh, I think is, is yet anybody's guess. But I think there are certain steps that you have to go through to establish what they are and then assess the feasibility and move ahead accordingly. Taxes, incentives, and business costs. Um, this area has a great opportunity in our, our mind uh, for more IT and warehousing um, type of activities, among others, and, and high-end manufacturers, all of which are um, high-end or high-energy users and or, or subject to personal property taxes that may discourage, otherwise discourage their development. So we think that uh, in terms of attracting certain manufacturers that are energy consumers and data centers particularly, uh, there should be some cooperation among uh, the Potomac Energy and, and, uh, um, and the county and, and so on to develop an energy pricing strategy that allows high energy users uh, to, uh, to come to the county. Um, one example, uh, I don't know if how many of you know of Hickory, North Carolina, one of the communities we profiled. Big furniture manufacturing firm, uh, or ma manufacturing location, still is. Furniture, furniture manufacturing is very, very prominent in that area of North Carolina. But they have recently become a, a data center location. Uh, they, uh, that whole area of, of Carolina, east or west of uh, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, north of Charlotte, uh, has become a data center corridor. Uh, and uh, Apple uh, recently established an, an iCloud uh, data center in, um, in, in the Hickory area, a hundred or a billion dollar facility with a hundred million dollar solar farm. Uh, high energy user, to be sure, you know, keeping all those computers running <laughs> and so on, uh, but they were able to establish a good uh, market pricing from, uh, from Duke Energy to allow that to happen. So those are the kinds of things that I think we need to be thinking about because those, uh, those are going to be, become increasingly um, prominent in the, uh, in the industry is these uh, massive uh, data processing and data store, <clears throat> pardon me, data storage centers. They don't generate a lot of employment, but they sure generate a lot of tax revenue. And I think uh, with the proper energy pricing and personal property tax uh, considerations, uh, that opportunity is available for you here in, uh, in Washington County. And then the, uh, you've had some great experience so far with this at the uh, corrections uh, complex and at, uh, at Staples, for example, example, the use of uh, solar energy systems as alternative energy sources to help reduce uh, the cost of power um, to uh, data centers and other, other uh, users. All of these and other recommendations that have been made under these various headings have been um, put in what we call a five-year plan of action where we have, and, and it's shown in our report, which, which is available online or will be available online, in five, we have five columns, 2013 through 2017, which identify actions to be undertaken for each, in each area, um, for each year, and with the lead and supporting uh, entities involved. You know, if it's an EDC uh, lead, we've, we've shown that, and other supporting entities that are responsible or, or participating in the process. So, so for each of these topics, seven topics, we have them allocated across the five-year time span um, for, a, uh, for implementation. Now, uh, as I said before, EDC is not responsible for everything. You know, there are certain actions that need to be undertaken by the Board of County Commissioners, the City Council, the uh, City Department of uh, Community and Economic Development, the, the County Department of Planning and Zoning, uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of these are in the matrix. 
and uh, we invite your in inspection of them in our report, which is available on the EDC website online. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done, and the extent that it can be accomplished really depends to some extent on the, on the, uh, the way the EDC, in part, is, uh, is organized and structured. Right now, uh, poor uh, Bob and Linda and Leslie are the staff. Uh, they're, they're four below a normal staff complement. So, so the, uh, the amount of work that's able to be undertaken, you know, will depend upon staffing levels uh, of the EDC and, and a variety of other factors. And that's up to Stu and his people and the EDC and others to kind of work out to come up with these tactical plans that can be implemented each year. The idea is to take the five-year plan and extend it every year. Uh, it, is, it is a plan now for 2013 to 17, which has to be tweaked depending upon staffing levels and so on, resources available and what have you. But the idea is to extend it each year so that it, it's a continuing five-year plan. And with the performance metrics that, are, that will be established uh, to monitor implementation of the plan, you'll hopefully be able to keep on track. This is the documentation that's available from the strategic planning process. There are several reports. There's a report on guiding principles, a competitive scorecard, the economic and community assessment, the final report of the strategic plan, which incorporates these things, and, and other, other things that are uh, ancillary, the Ripken feasibility study for the multi-use complex and the uh, uh, for, for the uh, strategic plan for the uh, Arts Council. They're all available on the EDC and county website. Thank you very much. Thank you.